Have you ever felt like dropping everything and returning in time? What if it took a decade and all the pain that Payne talked about? Of course, I am amazed by the main character and what he did to achieve his goal. When everything was ready for the journey to the past, he began to drink tea with Gui Ryongja. Gui Ryongja knew the great technique of regression, an integral part of many manhwas in this genre. This technique was achieved over centuries and passed down through generations. It was difficult to apply and Renji could have completed it, but he was too lazy. We are all a little Renja. So, the man decided to delegate this task to another person to collect so many materials himself. The first material was the Thunderbell, a sacred artifact of the Heavenly Wind Sect. The second material was the Divine Incense Burner, a sacred artifact of the Divine Dragon Family. The third was the essence of the 10,000-year-old Carp Core. The fourth material can be called the Secret Demonic Soul of the Demonic Sect. You'll be surprised now, but the main character was able to collect all these materials and even survive, as if he were unkillable. Doesn't it remind you of anyone? And of course, according to all the canons of regression, the main character had his own goal, revenge. He hated Hua Mugi so much, not returning to the past would be a terrible idea, as he simply wouldn't be able to defeat his nemesis. Now before us appears the most powerful villain of all eras, at whose hands even the leaders of the Alliance fell. Maximalism did not leave the guy for a second. Even the Manwa censors could not stop his ideas. Besides, he has a personal reason to hate Hua Mugi. The heavenly demon who died at the hands of Hua Mugi was the protagonist's father. But you know what? That's not the main reason he's thirsty for revenge. Hua Mugi is a man who spared no servants, no cooks, no small children, no animals. As you all know, the main characters are born to save the world from villains. Returning to the past is the only way to prevent many misfortunes. Before this happens, Gui Ryongja begs that upon arriving in the past, the protagonist finds him and stops him from getting married, so that later he doesn't have to disguise himself, take a child from an orphanage, and live as a miracle family. The story in the Manhwa continues at the point where the men need to be transferred to another room, where Gui Ryongja can use the Great Regression Technique. In pursuit of materials, the main character lost an eye and an arm, but let's say it was an equal exchange. Now imagine, how much effort did these artifacts cost? And what price? I was amazed by the protagonist's resilience. He was barely holding on, but he was fighting. So Gui Ryongja understood that he had to act quickly. He used his magical abilities, and a small black hole formed in the center of the box with materials. Gui Renja successfully used ninjutsu techniques, which allowed him to influence materials. I ask you to be as quiet as possible, as Renje needs to concentrate very seriously. It was not for nothing that Gui Renja studied ninjutsu techniques. He managed to create a rather large portal in space. But as we remember, our main character harnessed another guy to find all the necessary elements. Confirm that people can be very selfish. And now, Gui Ryongja follows his family's wishes by knocking the protagonist unconscious. But as in any story, everything cannot be simple. The man stopped at the portal as the main character paralyzed him. Are you ready? The protagonist didn't think long and hit the traitor painfully with an uppercut to the chin. Remember, this is not our crash, and even tears do not justify his betrayal. Perhaps the main character will become our crush, but we will find out by the end of the manhua. In his place, many would have acted differently. But we all remember that the main characters have unique properties. They are strong and wise beyond their years, although he is already quite old. Despite the betrayal, he still forgave Gui Ryongja because the man had been waiting for him his entire life. Do you understand what state Gui Ryongja was in? Well, he froze, literally. The main character is now in a world where time has stopped. I would have run to the supermarket for free goodies if I were him. Perhaps he had similar thoughts but didn't have time because a specific image appeared before him. This old man in front of him was literally a ticket to the past. This man first praised the protagonist for such great efforts, but he also said that the materials were not the most important aspect of this technique. Gui Ryongja's forgiveness was the final test that only some were ready to pass. The old man who controlled time was extremely curious about why the main character would go to the past. He asked about it. To this, the main character replies that he wants to send those who deserve it to another world and save those who should not go to another world. But that's not all. He wants to live his life meaningfully. Maybe he desperately wants to go back to the past because he regrets how he lived his life due to his strong anger towards Hua Mugi. The main character regrets everything that happened in his past. He lived for so many years, but nothing he did was of his own free will. All his actions were dictated by the circumstances of life. The deity that controls time is interested in discovering the life the main character would live. Hence, he sends him into the past. At that very moment, time began to flow again. Butterflies fluttered, and life reigned. Gui Ryongja's voice can be heard clearly. He still regrets his actions. Meanwhile, the hero goes closer to the portal. Gui Ryongja plaintively asks to save him from marriage, and the hero, as a farewell, only asks him not to get sick. Gui Renja cried out loudly because the hero did not respond to his request. 
He continued to beg for this favor, and here before us appears the young protagonist. He was a handsome brunette in his youth. He was pleased that he could return to the past. At the moment of his return, he hears a crowd of people joyfully shouting and greeting someone. The sounds of the joyful crowd continued unabated. People shouted and raised their hands incessantly. The thing is that in the very center, on the throne, sat he, the father of the main character. The father looked sternly at his son, frowning. It turned out that today was the day of the fight of a new demon. For this reason, one of the guys turned to the main character and, hitting the ground with a blade, furiously shouted that it was time to start the fight. The protagonist's father believed it necessary to choose the next leader of the sect, not through family ties, but through a duel. People reacted very strongly to this news because now, Everyone could become a heavenly demon if he was the strongest. Thus, the protagonist's father organized a fight, a competition among the next generation of leaders. And the winner of these fights will get to challenge one of the two sons of the heavenly demon. If he wins, then he will get the right to one wish from the heavenly demon himself. At the moment, the main character is watching the guy in front of him. In the past, he was offended by the fact that this man chose him as an opponent. G thought this choice was because he seemed much weaker than his brother, but it's more complex. This guy cheated. He talked the cook into putting energy-dispersing poison into the son of the heavenly demon's rice so that he couldn't use his magic during the fight. In the past, this guy defeated the main character. Well, it's time to change the situation. The protagonist remembered that all his failures began from that day. As soon as the opponent's voice brought him to his senses, the protagonist turned to this guy and asked his name. At that moment, he heard a loud scream. The guy shouted that the main character dared to ignore him and also said his name was Gu Pyeonho. In the past, the protagonist had to fight one of the seven disciples of the bloody heaven blade demon Gu Pyeongho, one of the eight supreme demons. The fifth disciple, looking towards his father, the protagonist experiences completely different feelings. He was confident that his father knew perfectly well about the poison that cuts energy. However, the father did not say a word about poison. He wanted to watch from the sidelines how his son would cope with the current situation. According to all the canons of regression, the main character will use his knowledge to change the past this time. However, he will not use spiritual energy and the skills he has acquired over the years to avoid standing out too much. The MC raises his hand and shouts that he can swear in front of all the heroes and their sex that he will fight Gu Pyunho without using spiritual energy. At first, the people were amazed, but in seconds, surprise turned into pride. They enthusiastically supported the son of the heavenly demon, calling him an unrivaled master of the sword. Gu Pyunho took the initiative, saying that if that was the case, he would not use his spiritual energy either. Of course, the people reacted to this request in a completely different way. They were upset that since these two would not use spiritual energy, there would be nothing to see here. As expected of the impulsive Gu Pyeonho, he abruptly slashed his blade at the ground, spreading dust and rock fragments across the surface. At that moment, he threatened the son of the heavenly demon. But these threats were useless to the main character. He continued to think about his own. Gu Pyeongho put his machete forward and told the protagonist that the fight was starting. He also gave the protagonist time to draw his sword. However, our main character is not inclined to use the sword in battle. In his opinion, he can cope just fine without a sword. Hearing this, the crowd shouted that the son of the heavenly demon did not respect Gu Pyeongho, which embarrassed Gu and a slight blush appeared on his cheeks. In this way, the main character angered his opponent, forcing him to act thoughtlessly and immediately rush into battle. This was done so that the protagonist could test his reaction. When the opponent hit him, the protagonist dodged easily. Gu Pyeongho didn't give up. He swung his machete again and hit the brunette on the side. One more sharp blow and the blade would have touched our mister's neck, but the strongest hero jumped up and did a somersault in the air landing successfully. He probably learned this from Rock Lee. The protagonist's heart flutters so much that he hasn't felt such pleasant sensations for a long time. The battle was in full swing, and Gu Pyunho did not stand still. Consumed by rage, he suddenly jumped toward the protagonist and swung at him, wanting to hit his head. But at that moment, the main character approaches him even closer and hits him in the stomach with his elbow with all his might. Please note that the hero does not even use a sword. At that moment, Gu Pyunho felt a fist on his face which painfully pressed against his nose. One more movement of his hand, and the protagonist made a triumphant uppercut to his opponent's chin. The brunette continued his attacks, paying particular attention to Gu Pyunho's face. The audience could see how the hero made his next blow, after which Gu Pyunho rose slightly above the ground. At that moment, his body was writhing terribly in pain. At that moment, the hero grabbed the guy by the hand and asked if this was the hand with which he had given the poison. Our MC didn't even wait for an answer. He broke Gu Pyunho's arm without feeling regret. I was no less surprised than all the other spectators who could not take their eyes off the fight. Another moment, Gu Pyunho was lying on the ground next to the main character, and the brunette was standing nearby. As expected, he kept his promise. By returning to the past, 
the main character was able to stop others from influencing his life so quickly, which is something he also strongly desired. The audience was still very much worried about the fallen enemy. But here, I would focus on the heavenly demon who raised his hand and asked his son to name his wish. Earlier, he promised to grant one wish to the winner. Usually, in such a situation, people ask for a sword made by a master or a secret martial art. However, our MC didn't want to follow everyone's lead. He wanted to go hunting with his father. At first, the heavenly demon did not answer, but after thinking about it, he asked his son again if he wanted to hunt with him. Smiling, the hero claimed he would be interested in a joint hunt. The man agreed since he had no choice. He agreed on the time of the hunt tomorrow's dawn. And then we see a picture of how the heavenly demon turned his back on everyone and went to his chambers. Gu Pyeongho thought the protagonist was a real idiot for using his only wish for such a trivial thing. The hero asked to remind him what his opponent's name was. This made the guy even angrier. He snapped while other men grabbed him, trying to calm him down. This moment became the starting point for the fact that the main character will no longer live a thoughtless life. From now on, he makes decisions for himself. Night came when the main character looked at his reflection in the mirror. He found a handsome young man there. He looked closely and examined his young skin, and then he remembered himself, the old man he had become. However, the main goal of the main character is revenge on Hua Mugi. Of course, the hero remembers this, and from the first day in the past, he is already interested in where this guy is. As in any man Hua, everything can't be so elementary. First, the main character needs to find where Hua Mugi is before he becomes the strongest. There was little information about Hua Mugi, but at the same time, trying to find him by telling the whole world his name would be a very dangerous provocation. The unexpected happened, and the hero heard a familiar voice, claiming he fought well today. When the main character turned around, he saw his bodyguard, Leon, in front of him. It may seem that she is quite large in build. Still, there is an explanation for this which even the main character himself understood not so long ago. Her appearance is explained by the martial arts that she practices. Let's learn. This technique is called petrification of the body, and whoever uses it gets the ability to make their body as hard as a rock. This is a secret technique known only to a small circle of people, but Leon was able to comprehend it. Leon tried very hard to learn this technique. Despite its main drawback, this technique makes the body voluminous. The girl taught it. She heroically covered the main character with herself, to protect the main character from Hua Mugi. The main character survived only thanks to her sacrifice, and remembering these events, he thoughtfully looked at his savior. Li An was surprised as the master looked at her silently, and soon, he began to come even closer. At that moment, he realized that he had misbehaved, taking her for granted, yet she was ready to sacrifice her life for him. As a child, Li An was an incredibly beautiful girl. Everyone thought that she would become a beauty when she grew up. However, the one who was so attractive suddenly gained weight in one day. She was ready to do anything to protect her senpai, just like our sweet Yunochka. Lian resigned herself to losing her appearance when she could have become the most beautiful girl in the world. She chose to save her loved one over beauty. While this dear man began to treat her more coldly, only based on her appearance, he was not interested in her feelings. At this time, the hero silently watched the girl and also silently gave her a promise to definitely find a cure for the side effects of the body petrification technique. Leon asks the master, Surprised if everything is okay, the master replies that everything is okay, and he feels better because Leon is nearby. Leon noticed that the hero acted strangely today, and then the brunette smiled. He thought that she would notice it. The events moved to the dining room, where the main character wants to talk to the cook who added poison to the food. All the cooks bowed politely, but the hero did not stand on ceremony. He immediately turned to the right cook and asked him the reasons for his action. The cook pretended that he didn't know what they were talking about. Still, the brunette gave him an angry look. It reminded him that he had poisoned his food with a poison that dispersed spiritual energy. The man was terrified. A shudder ran through his body and he began to furiously prove that this had not happened. And to expose the cook, the hero reminded him of his debts. The thing is that this boy was deeply in debt due to his gambling addiction. He spent all his parents' money and even the money he borrowed from friends. So he decided to do such a crazy thing. He mixed poison into the son of a heavenly demon. Soon, the cook confessed everything. He bowed before the master and tearfully asked for forgiveness, saying that he had made a big mistake and money had blinded him. At this point, we learn that Gu Pyeongho personally gave the chef the money to win. That's all the main character wanted to know, and he didn't need a traitor who was ready to poison him for money. One swing of the sword and the hero took the cook's life. Everyone who became an involuntary witness to what happened screamed in fear. The hero called this guy a disgrace since he brazenly decided to poison other people's food, taking advantage of his position. Suddenly, he heard one of the guys fall to the floor, bow, and shout that he would take responsibility for the deed he had committed. However, the hero does not see any need for this since the responsibility 
lies directly with the one who poisoned the food. Still, the men insisted that everything in the kitchen fell on his shoulders. However, the master does not consider this view true, since even his father is not responsible for everything that happens in the sect. Therefore, this cook is not responsible for everything in the kitchen. Turning his back to the cooks, the protagonist puts his sword in the stock and finally asks the man to stop talking nonsense and cook him chicken noodles for dinner. Leanne had been nearby the whole time, and when the guy started to come out, she asked him if he hadn't eaten these noodles a few days ago. Looking at the girl, the brunette smiled involuntarily. In his case, not a few days had passed, but several decades. The events in the Manwa take place the next day at dawn, in the pavilion of the Heavenly Demon. The demon looked at the main character and asked what kind of junk was on him. Then, the main character answered that these were items that he would need in a few days. The father believes that they only need one day to hunt, but the protagonist still has hope that they will hunt much longer. While the boys were passing by the mountains, the father told his son that he had exceeded all his expectations. The brunette could tell the city he was still hiding his abilities. Still, the heavenly demon understood everything perfectly well, even without these words. The conversation between the boys continued, and the father asked how much progress the boy had made in studying the art of the floating sword. This art is passed down through the family of the heavenly demon. It is considered a very advanced martial art, similar to those studied by the supreme demons. And as you already understand, the main character completely mastered this art, which he told his father about. The father naturally wanted to check this, but the hero was agile and dodged in time, proving he was not lying. The heavenly demon was greatly surprised as the boy had achieved this art at a young age, which meant he deserved praise. It was rare for the heavenly demon to praise his dreams, therefore it brought a smile to the protagonist's face. The events in the Manhua continue rapidly. While the guys go hunting, the main character asks his father who taught him to hunt so well. From this dialogue, he learns that he has an uncle who taught his father to hunt. But the heavenly demon also informed him that his brother was dead, and he killed him with his own hands when he was about the same age as the protagonist. If he had not done this deed, he would not have had a son. Hearing this, the hero told his father that he had done an excellent job. At present, the protagonist looks thoughtfully towards his father. He was raised that even his father was hurt to go against his own family. Besides, he often saw something like this in his past life. The father stopped and said he could not find any other choice, so he sent his brother to another world. The protagonist clenched his fist tightly and stated that, unlike his own father, he would not be able to kill his brother in a power struggle since he had no reason to do so. After all, his brother was already mired in cruelty and depravity. The man emphasized that his son was talking about his brother in this way because he was not around. According to the plot, a father and son approached a mountain and began to climb it. The main character looked thoughtfully towards his father. In his past life, he never got married, so he didn't know what it was like to have children. Moving his legs up, one after the other, he soon jumps onto the top. He still thinks about children and would be extremely interested to know what kind of father he would be. So the father and son went upstairs, and while looking around, the boy asked his father if anyone was there. The father replied that their dinner was here, but when asked if they should go into battle, the heavenly demon replied that the boy couldn't finish something he couldn't even see. He asks his son to first close his eyes and feel the world around him to orient himself to his senses. In this story, a martial artist relies on vibrations in the air to find his opponent. Ordinary people call this energy an aura. The hero can only feel his father's aura. He feels nothing else. Sharing this information with his father, he gets advice to concentrate a little energy into a single line and compress it without damaging the flow. The father asks his son to imagine that his body is a ball of yarn, then asks him to slowly release the energy as if he were reaching for the thread. The main character concentrated as much as possible and soon said he felt a specific tree nearby. But as we all understand, the tree cannot be dangerous. The father asks his son to examine the area around the tree, and then the brunette discovers a fierce and wild boar. The hero turned to his father and described the beast he felt. The snake had tough fur and a long body, so it seemed like a wild boar. The father confirmed that it was a wild boar. After hearing this, the main character stated that in the end, thanks to his body, he quickly mastered martial arts, which is why he could understand what kind of beast was nearby. The moment of hunting for a wild boar in the Manhua was skipped, so we can immediately see how the guys prepare the beast. When his father asked when the hero learned to cook wild animals, the hero replied that he had read about it in a book. The heavenly demon replied that his son seemed experienced, although he was doing this for the first time. The hero noted that he was glad to appear so, but before his regression, he had been cooking boars a little while hunting. The hero then pointed to the skin of a wild animal. He declared that he had prepared it for his father to sit on. He had done this to win his favor, and it was worth carrying all this heavy load. The man thought that his son had wanted to go hunting together. Still, the hero claimed this was not the case. 
and he understood perfectly well that he would not be able to become the heir, and only his strength could help him with this. Next, we learn that the main character had two reasons for hunting with his father. The first was to get instructions from his father to become stronger. We all remember that the main character wanted to change his life completely. From that moment on, he tried to recreate new memories with his father since the scary moments were not memories. Mostly, he does this for himself and not at all for his father. When the guys looked at the sky, they noticed it was already getting light, and they had to return. But only GGG thought so. His father said that they were staying, and since he had gone hunting with him, the guy was obliged to kill at least a tiger before they returned. The main character was stunned. At that very hour, his father asked him to act. He again asked him to close his eyes and feel the presence of the tiger nearby. According to the Sky Demon, the target is a hundred yards from his son's right. He is further away than last time, and now he needs his son to sense the slightest breath of wind and synchronize his energy with it. Gigi lived for many years. But during all this time, the idea of combining his energy with light did not occur to him. No one could give him this knowledge, and none of the martial arts taught this. Gigi concentrated as much as possible. He was warned that nothing good would come if he dared to hesitate and be cautious. He needed to direct the energy as quickly as possible to use this in an actual situation. Despite his considerable experience, the main character, feeling the wind and his spiritual energy, did not know how to synchronize them. In just an instant, he realized that synchronizing with the wind did not mean following it. He needed to link them together. And when he did this, he felt the aura of a wild tiger hiding behind the bushes. The main character suddenly came out of this state and, turning to his father, said, there really was a tiger there. But the demon of heaven was unperturbed. He asked his son not to be lazy and to release his spiritual energy because the more channels he could support, the higher his chances of survival. One day, while sitting around a fire, a father and son were drinking. The protagonist complained that the drink was too strong for him, but this was just another lie. And the guy didn't understand why they were drinking because having a strong heart is much more important than drinking strong alcohol. Upon hearing this, the man asked the guy if he could take his life to save his own. And as we all understand, the main character denies this because a child cannot kill his own parent. But this also turned out to be a lie, because if he had enough reasons for this, he would have done it even with his father. Today, the main character spoke openly to his father for the first time. So, the heavenly demon asks his son not to talk about the hardness of the heart if he cannot agree to it. The main character replied that if so, he must learn to drink alcohol. Days passed, and thanks to the fact that the MC had started practicing since returning to the past, it was now easy for him to synchronize spiritual energy with the wind. From now on, he can control three or four channels, like the main character. I did not expect his father to teach him to release spiritual energy to explore his surroundings. It can be considered equivalent to gaining an extra life. Singing, it is within its power to see who wants to attack it in advance. It can neutralize any invisibility techniques if it can maintain more than 10 channels. The only thing that upsets the main character is that even his father lost to Huamugi despite his skill, because he infiltrated the Heavenly Demon's pavilion. The story then proceeds to describe the pavilion, carefully guarded by three barriers, six lines of traps, and a group of carefully selected elite warriors. Also, the eight supreme demons guard the Heavenly Demon in eight different directions. So, in the north are the demonic swordsmen. In the south are the demon blades of the southern Heavenly Blade family led by the bloody Heavenly Blade Demon. The East is controlled by the Iron Fists of the Eastern Fists faction, led by the Invincible Fist Demon. The West is ruled by a demon who steals souls from demonic guardians and belongs to the Western Illusion faction. To the Northeast are the Faceless Swordsmen, who yearn to become evil smiling demons. To the Southeast are the Drunken Swordsmen, who are always getting drunk with the demonic drunkards. In the southwest are the poisoned fangs, who study the intricacies of poisoning under the guidance of the king of poisons. And finally, in the northwest, some mad monks are obsessed with viewing demonic things, misleading the people. As we can see, many people defended the pavilion. Our main character thought that the enemy had broken through from the outside, but he was wrong. The outer defense was never broken through. Most likely there was a traitor among these demons, Maybe more than one, but he was never found. However, the main character has already decided that each of the eight is a traitor to him since, after his father's death, none of the supreme demons took revenge. Instead, they closed the demonic sect. The main character, who knows the events that will happen by heart, decides to use the supreme demons to the marrow of their bones. They are to blame for this. The boy shuddered enormously when he heard Leon being called fat while asking her where the second young master was. The girl was told that they were tired of waiting for the young master, so they asked her to go to the master and drag him there. The girl wanted to object, but suddenly, she heard a familiar voice. Turning around, she saw the master, 
who curiously asked what was happening there, when the protagonist turned back to notice the blade demon's disciple Yang Po. This brazen guy is acting like this because of the heavenly demon. After the announcement that any member of the sect can become the heir, the status of the heavenly demon's son no longer has any meaning. Thus, this gave rise to the desire to defeat the sons of the heavenly demon to achieve fame. At present, the protagonist asks the guy why he came. It turns out that Yang Po wants the son of the heavenly demon to take responsibility for what he did since. Because of him, Pyun Ho can no longer master martial arts. You must understand that a simple public apology would be sufficient in such a case. But things are not that simple. Yang Po wants the hero to make a public apology to declare that he defended the honor of the bloody heaven blade demon. Realizing this, the guy stated that, in his opinion, his own teacher would not choose Yang Po as the best student because of such a trifle. Naturally, Yang Po vigorously denies this saying he is here only for Pyun Ho. The atmosphere between the guys changed. The main character wants Yang to ask him for forgiveness, not vice versa. When Yang Po asked why he should apologize, the hero replied that he should apologize for his rude treatment of his subordinate. Lian declared everything was fine, but the hero did not even listen to her, as he did not intend to tolerate this. The brunette suddenly stepped forward and declared that Yang Po should get down on his knees and beg his forgiveness for the rude way he called his subordinate. At first, Yang Po kept himself under control, but soon, he could not stand it and shouted that it was better for him to die than to kneel and beg for forgiveness. This is what our main character was trying to achieve. He slowly takes his sword out of its sheath, saying he can fulfill Yang Po's wish. Everyone present was surprised, and Yang Po himself said the hero had simply gone crazy. The protagonist holds the sword before him, declaring that Yang Po should either stand up and ask for forgiveness or fight him. When asked why he had to go so far, the main character replied that he could accept that the guy had come for him and understand that he was thirsty for revenge, but he couldn't allow such treatment of his subordinate. Yang Po laughed loudly. He found it funny that the second master wanted to kill him with this pig. The conflict was severe. Yang Po took out his weapon, and now the guys were preparing for a real fight. Yang Po took a fighting stance, claiming that since he would have to fight the son of the heavenly demon, it would be enough for him to get his hand. Everyone who witnessed what was happening was terrified. Leon was worried about the second master, while the guys were afraid for Yang Po. It was their worries that turned out to be justified. Yang tried to hit the hero, but all in vain. The brunette was able to deftly dodge. Because Yang Po said too many unnecessary things, his mouth became the reason why the hero sent him to another world without any problems by hitting him with his blade. According to the hero, Yang Po refused to apologize to his subordinate and insulted her with his mouth. When the inevitable happened, the friends immediately ran to Yang Po. Now the fate of Ken, holding his friend in his arms, awaited them. One of the guys threatened the second master. Still, he immediately stated that his mouth was very similar to Yang Po's mouth, and if he did not shut up, then the same fate awaited him. But suddenly, he heard a familiar female voice. Leon asked with some fear in her voice why the second master was going so far for her. She was worried that the bloody heaven blade demon would not leave second master alone now. The protagonist tried to calm his subordinate down, saying that this guy was unlikely to do anything since there was no benefit from it. Lian was afraid that the second master would hurt his pride this way, but the guy still tried to calm her down. They said he had no pride. There's a heartfelt moment in the manhua where the hero puts his hands on Lian's shoulders and asks her not to worry about him. Moving away from the girl, the guy remembered that he, on the contrary, could get something by killing Yang Po. His victory over Gu Yunho and the murder of Yang Po would attract everyone's attention to the sect. Overall, he would have earned first place if points were given out during the succession battle. Suddenly, he hears that sweet female voice again. Leon thanks the master from the bottom of her heart for standing by her side. The main character looked at the girl tenderly and smiled sweetly. The guy was so happy that Leon was smiling that he wanted the smile to never leave her face. He wanted to make her life happy. Night had come and the full moon adorned the night sky. Sitting on the big boulder, the protagonist thinks he remembers the moment when he was overcome by a feeling of emptiness after the fall of the demonic sect. At that time, the despair was so great that he saw no point in living without some kind of goal. How would the main character's life have turned out if he hadn't known about the regression technique? Now, the brunette was actively thinking about it, but still couldn't find an answer. He would have continued to ponder this. Perhaps an answer would have been found if the bloody heaven blade demon had not suddenly appeared before him. The guy didn't expect this demon to appear now and being in a position where a blade was pressed to his neck, the hero didn't know if he could dodge. And do you know what happened? The blade gradually moved away from the hero's neck and ceased to threaten him. The demon sat down nearby on that very cobblestone and hid the blade in the opposite direction from the hero. At first, he met the hero with his gaze and a crazy smile. After a short pause, 
He politely asked the main character why he did this. The hero took that smile on himself and claimed that Yang Po had been acting like an absolute idiot. The man looked thoughtfully at the main character, and then the guy asked what purpose he had come here. At that same hour, he again felt the cold steel next to his neck. The old man considered that he could love his head and present it to the heavenly demon to see if the demon would care. Then, the brunette calmly declared that this blade would not be able to cut off his head. For a second, the old man removed the blade away from the guy's face, lowered it down, and began to draw the figure of a cross on the earth. When asked what it was, the old man replied that it was how much the heavenly demon would be concerned about all this. On this cross that he had drawn, a small part belonged to the hero, and the more significant part to him. Then, the hero lowered himself and drew a new line with his finger. According to him, he is the son of the heavenly demon, which means he will have at least some meaning. The matter reaches a dead end. The man wants to check by action whether the heavenly demon will avenge his son or leave everything as is, so without thinking twice, he decides to attack the brunette. The hero grinned maliciously, his eyes full of madness, like lights on the day of his defeat. The hero stated there was no point in this since the heavenly demon had two sons at once, and the old man had only one. These words convinced the old man. He said that the hero was much smarter than his student, and also added that he was living a life filled with misfortune and hoped not to meet again. The hero smiled slyly and said that he would remember this advice. The old man left the brunette, and he rose from the cobblestone and walked around him. Suddenly, he felt an intense pain in his body. It turned out that the moment when the old man touched him with the hilt of the sword, he gave him burns. The bloody sky blade demon looks like he can do anything, but that's not the case at all. He carefully thinks through and plans. And the fact that he repeated twice that he would only take his father's head means that he really thought about it and came here to see him. The main character's battle with Yang Po left a lasting impression on the old man, and he probably regarded his desire to hunt with his father as something unusual. There is a possibility that this old man came here to make sure whether our protagonist will become the next heir. That night, our MC continued to train hard, wanting to improve his skills. But when he heard the sound from above, he stopped training and looked at the roof. Then he jumped up and climbed onto her. Imagine our hero's surprise when he saw his father standing before him, thoughtfully on the roof's edge and pondering. The heavenly demon sensed someone's presence, and he turned around. The first thing he asked his son was why he killed the disciple of the bloody heaven blade demon. First, the brunette confirmed that this had indeed happened, and then said that his student deserved his fate. But this was utterly unimportant to the heavenly demon. What worried him most was that the bloody heavenly blade demon was looking for him in connection with what happened. The demon desires for the son of the heavenly demon to be punished for what he has done. Thus, the hero realized that the demon simply wanted to test his connection with his father and see whether his father would punish him for this. This is only necessary to understand whether the heavenly demon regards his son as a candidate for the heir. Imagine my surprise when the heavenly demon said he would pass judgment on the hero. The protagonist believes there is no basis for punishment, but according to his father, they can be created. The manhwa recalls a recent conversation between a son and a father, in which the son asked his father which of the upper demons he trusted the most. At that moment, the father did not give his son a clear answer. And now, the son received an answer. The heavenly demon does not trust anyone even the supreme demons. The father also recalled his son's words about bringing order to the hierarchy and discipline, and asked him not to talk nonsense about the need to eradicate corruption, since he wanted to hear his son's true intentions. After a short pause, the hero replied that they had strayed from the demon's correct path, in his opinion. According to the guy, the true path of the demon is the absolute victory over evil. The father was amazed because he had not expected to hear this. According to the hero, the light faction is not the direct opposite of their sect, but absolute evil is definitely their complete opposite. The justice and nobility that the light faction advocates could deal with lesser evil, but they are most likely incapable of dealing with absolute evil. After all, the light faction is forgiving. They are, at their core, true angels. As long as the value of people is above all else for them, how can they resist the unfeeling evil that has lost its humanity? It is hard for the hero to admit this. However, they are still the only ones in Murum who can eliminate cruel and vicious evil, becoming even more brutal. When the great evil that even the light faction cannot cope with kneels before them, they can achieve the true demonic path. This is the philosophy of the hero who penetrated the past. They will most likely fall if they cannot ascend the demon path, which means they must be punished to survive. According to the hero, his father had not thought about this before, and it is unlikely that anyone could have spoken out in such a way. The hero did not realize this while in the sect. It only dawned on him when he wandered through the central valleys, spending his entire life like this. The heavenly demon asked his son if he had any more arrogant remarks to make, and he looked away, 
saying that was all. At that time, the man stated that he realized that the bloody Heaven Blade demons wanted to punish him because they saw something special in him and were using the Heavenly Demon to test him. The brunette admitted they just want to understand whether he is worthy of becoming the next heir. The Heavenly Demon also speculated that the old man saw his son as a threat to their own sect. Then, the events become even more dynamic. The man asks his son to follow him, and soon, they find themselves in the cave of the small heavens. We must know that this cave serves as a place where the disciples or children of the heavenly demon undergo their trials to gain a chance to become a candidate for the air. It's easy to get in here, but if you fail the tests, you'll stay here forever, and the chance of success is 50-50. Half of the heavenly demon's bloodline had rotted there. This place was so dangerous that even his high-ranking brother had never expressed any desire to go there. But the hero understands that he must pass this test to become a heavenly demon. From the following dialogue, we learn that the current heavenly demon went to this cave at the age his son is now. He then goes on to say that he was there for two months. The hero was stunned by this news, as his father was known as a martial artist among the heavenly demons. It took him two months to pass the test. Next, we learn even more frightening information. The main character's father is the only one who passed this test in two months, while the others had to spend about three years of their lives. The hero asked his father if he wanted to send him there without any preparation. Then, the heavenly demon reminded him of the recent conversation about punishment. There were only two options here. Why did the father want to punish his son this way? Perhaps it was because of the demon of the Blade of the Bloody Heavens, who demanded punishment for the hero. Or maybe it's because he wants his son to become stronger and get out of there unharmed. Be that as it may, the hero's smile and excitement appear when he promises to create a new record. The heavenly demon liked this attitude. He smirked and asked his son to at least survive. The artist depicted a nasty, dark cave through which the hero rushed. The guy looked around carefully, as he still had no idea what could have brought so many people to their deaths in this place. Approaching the tablet, he saw his task. First, he had to destroy all opponents without using the sword's aura or enhancing it. If he fails to succeed within the allotted time, he will be given another chance after 10 days. If ready, he is asked to join the Crimson Circle. In this cave, time passed in seconds. The only food was grain balls, so it was more difficult to survive. The protagonist does not hesitate. He approaches the Scarlet Circle, showing his readiness. It immediately reminds me of games where you also had to stand in circles to start completing a quest. By the way, does everyone love Diluc? Each enemy had his own unique red mark. After looking at it, the hero decided that he needed to cut precisely at it. Then he approached one of the opponents and, with a sharp movement, struck his sword across the neck right at the place of the red mark. It worked, so he continued swinging his sword, hitting every mark within his blade's range. The guy successfully defended himself and protected himself, navigating the crowd of mobs. He hit two at once with one sharp movement and then the third, depriving the dummies of their heads and arms. The enemies were more potent than the main character thought, but this did not stop him from defeating many. When he moved away from his opponents, he noticed that some were still alive and moving while others were alive without legs. Then the brunette raised the sword again and began to run towards them. He simply could not let them get away. The guy swung his sword and quickly tore the mob's head off. Now, only a few remain who can still move. Making a sharp dash forward, getting into a fighting stance, and waving a sharp blade, the hero deprived them of the ability to move. A few more strong swings, a successful landing on the ground, and the main character has only one opponent left. This mob was actually under the tile. Without taking his eyes off it, the protagonist abruptly steps forward, heading towards it. The weak point of this mannequin was also its neck. Do you know who it reminds you of? The main character ran up to him, deprived him of his head, and then suddenly rushed in the opposite direction. At the same time, his head literally flew into the air. Now, the guy could breathe a sigh of relief. If he had let his guard down for another second, he would have had to spend ten whole days here. But fortunately, everything worked out. And if it weren't for the protagonist's regression, he simply wouldn't have had the strength to pass this test. When the guy defeated all the mobs, he confidently approached the gates that opened. As he walked forward, you notice the writing on the walls, where his predecessors wrote how many days it took them to pass this test, and someone did not pass it at all. He tried to go back, but there was no way out. The handwriting at the end of these entries turned out to be very familiar. It was the handwriting of the main character's father, who called everyone else idiots. The heavenly demon was right, but the guy still couldn't believe he had scolded all their ancestors. Tearing himself away from reading the inscriptions, the main character went forward. He found himself in a new room with various closed gates and a scarlet circle in the middle. He saw various weapons on the walls, and given this fact, they would definitely be needed in this test. The hero walked up to the table and read the task description. He had to use the swords hanging on the wall to split the ball in half within two hours. Here, you could use the sword's aura or strengthen it. If the protagonist fails to succeed within the allotted time, he will be given another chance after 20 days. The hero immediately approached the scarlet circle, demonstrating his readiness. Then, 
a tile with a ball appeared in front of him. Looking at it, the hero decided that two hours was too much to cut one ball in half. This means there is some catch here, but be that as it may, the hero takes out his sword, after which he hits the ball hard with it. As a result, he was left without part of the sword blade, but he guessed that such an outcome was possible. So he plans to cut the ball in half with the sword's enhanced aura. The hero concentrated his aura on the sword and aimed it at the ball. Oddly enough, this was enough to leave a mark on the ball. This task was too easy for a person who had undergone regression. The hero became curious about how the others passed this test. He again found inscriptions on the wall. Someone got the ball from their sword aura on the first try, and someone could not cut it. A person also passed the test without using the enhanced sword aura, but many considered him a liar. But the main character's father wrote that this was complete nonsense, and they would definitely lose if they broke the ball. The hero did not understand why his father wrote that. He could have simply insulted everyone and calmly finished the task. Let's remember the task itself. It said that the participant could apply the aura, but not use it. It turns out that this test can only be genuinely passed without the help of the sword's aura or its enhancement, he warned everyone. The hero knew that he had already spent several minutes reading the letters of his predecessors, which meant that there was no more time to waste. The guy took out a hammer and began to chop the ball with it. This time, he did not use the aura. Since he couldn't get it right with one hit, he tried hitting the ball from a different angle, from the side. Sweat was pouring down the protagonist's face non-stop. He was furious because he couldn't even leave a scratch on the ball. The hero was running out of time and was already wondering if he should use the sword's enhanced aura and move on. The brunette raised his head. He realized that his father had split the ball without aura's help. And suddenly, a specific realization came to him from which he shuddered. The boy closes his eyes and performs the technique his father showed him. He felt a line on the ball that was invisible to ordinary vision. The guy continued to keep his eyes closed. He tuned into the line around the ball, raising the blade, and sharply struck it. Then he opened his eyes and happily announced that he had managed to break the ball. But suddenly, he was frozen by what he saw. Can you imagine there was a demonic essence pill there? If someone who studies demonic martial arts swallows this pill, they will gain incredible energy. The hero realized that if he cut the ball with the sword's enhanced aura, the pill would be destroyed due to the high temperature. He smiled as he received a reward for his efforts. The boy thanked his father for the hint after which he sat down on the floor and began to concentrate on absorbing the energy of the pill into himself. The pill in his hands even glowed, and purple sparks came from it. It was an indescribable feeling as the main character's body was enveloped in a powerful flow of energy, one that he had never felt before. After that, he again approached the tablet where the inscriptions were. Divide life and death. If you fail to succeed within the set time, you will be given another chance after five days. The very name of the test already raised many questions. As is standard for all dungeons, the hero stood in a circle, and the object of the test appeared in front of him. It was a kind of table with herbs. This test required distinguishing medicinal herbs from poisonous ones. Here, regression also dramatically saves the hero because, in the future, he searches everywhere for ingredients for Gui Ryongja. Hence, he knows the varieties of all medicinal herbs and poisonous plants and their effects. The brunette could be sure that this test would not cause him any difficulty. He resolutely reached for one plant, since it was the only one that was not poisonous. Here, the hero guessed correctly, but he was faced with a new choice. This was done to avoid the possibility of a simple guess. The son of the heavenly demon also quickly found the medicinal plant and took it into his hands. The table went down again, and the main character could only guess whether the test was completed. The boy heard the crack again and looked around. At this stage, he also notices inscriptions. Someone wrote that at this rate, he too would become a poisonous person and someone wrote that it was impossible to get through this. Someone wrote that this task made him turn gray, and the hero's father asked the others not to hope for luck. The hero walked forward, smiling. Fortunately, he and his father managed to save their hair. The time had come for the final test. Here, it was necessary to survive in the illusory trap of life and death, and if death overtook the trap, it would overtake reality. It was indeed a risky test, but risk is a noble cause. The writing on the walls said that the ordeal was horrible and terrifying, and they never wanted to go through it again in their lives. The guy also found a hint from his father, who asked him not to relax. The hero stood on the scarlet circle, and at the exact moment he heard a characteristic hissing sound in different directions from himself. The illusions transported the guy to the desert. Everything here was lifeless. Only boulders and part of a tree were nearby. The hero felt the wind hitting his face, then dropped down and touched the sand. Everything here was real. It seemed inconceivable to him that there was anything that could recreate such believable things. Everything was so quiet and calm until recently when he looked back and saw that he was surrounded by a crowd of zombies. Everything was far from as rosy as in the anime zombie death list. By the way, I recommend watching it. The recreation of reality seemed like an excellent opportunity for the guy to show his skills, and without thinking twice, 
He took the sword out of its sheath. The zombies also did not stand still. They were all armed with heavy weapons, and they pointed towards the brunette. The hero ran up to one of the zombies and pierced his head with his sword, piercing it in the chin area. Simultaneously, other zombies point their sharp blades at him, but the guy dodges their attacks easily. How? It's easy. He jumps in the air, and when zombie hits the void, the hero is already behind them. It looks like Rock Lee was his sensei, after all. Since the hero doesn't deal with people, he can fight these mobs without hesitation. Thinking about this, the guy used spiritual energy and killed several zombies at once with one sharp blow of the blade. But the battle continued, and many remained alive. They ran towards the hero, pointing swords and rapiers at him. The main character saw all this perfectly well. He was focused because he remembered his main task here was survival. The guy closed his eyes and focused his energy on his opponents. A little more, and they would have wounded the hero. But he turned out to be quicker. With his technique's help, he could identify weak spots on the zombie's body. Everyone had a weak spot in the head and upper body area. Trusting his feelings, the guy used the sword and heroically struck the zombie's weak points. Everyone fell suddenly from his blade. Their weapons could be heard clanging as they fell to the floor. A thick layer of dust also formed around, slightly obscuring the field of vision. The main character would be sorry if it all ended there. The boy grinned when he saw the stronger creatures. The undead that approached him in terms of their energy was an order of magnitude more powerful, which meant that something more interesting could be expected from them.